What's up, nerds? Moscow was hit with a really terrible terrorist attack yesterday, and we need to talk about it because the implications of this attack could be pretty immense. More specifically, we need to be looking at exactly how Putin plans to react to these attacks. Now, this is an evolving situation, so we're going to talk about what we know up to this point. It is currently the morning of March 23rd, 2024. Now, let's dive into it. In the late afternoon of March 22nd, several gunmen drove up to the Krakus City Hall in Moscow. Now, this is a pretty large shopping mall, which I also has a movie theater and a kind of a concert hall inside of it a pretty big social place with lots and lots of people that tend to gather especially in the late evening these four gunmen drove up to the mall opened their door in their car and just started shooting people reportedly three of the terrorists were busy shooting everybody while the other was setting fire to the concert hall with incendiary devices like molotov cocktails that they had prepared beforehand by the time that emergency services had finally arrived to the scene the terrorists had already barricaded themselves inside the mall and set fired to the concert hall. In fact, firefighters couldn't even battle the flames because they weren't allowed in because the fighting was still going on. And by the time Russian security services arrived and tried to attack the terrorists, they ultimately had to withdraw from the mall because of the dense smoke. When it was all over, over 150 people had been killed with over 100 wounded, and that figure is likely to continue to rise as people continue to go through the rubble and find people. Needless to say, this is one of the worst terrorist attacks in the city of Moscow's history and in Russian history. However, it gets worse from here because after the attacks, the terrorists were still at large. Nobody knew where they had gone. And by this point, Russian government officials and Russian media had begun blaming Ukraine for these attacks. Of course, some Ukrainian media began blaming the Russian government, saying that it was a false flag. And Ukrainian government officials and U.S. officials all stated that Ukraine had nothing to do with these attacks. Now, finally, ISIS did ultimately claim responsibility, stating that their four gunmen had managed to escape and claiming that they were doing this in response to Russian activities in Syria. The following morning, it appears that these terrorists had actually been arrested in the Bryansk region of Russia while attempting to flee. This is where things get a little interesting, but we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. Because the ISIS-affiliated Amak news agency released additional information about this attack, showing pictures of the attackers. Now, in an address to Russia, Vladimir Putin claimed that the terrorists were able to flee, however, they were attempting to flee to the Ukrainian border where they had prepared an escape route. Now, this was not a, a direct accusation of the Ukrainian government, but it certainly was implying that the Ukrainian government, or at least the Ukrainian military, had something to do with this. It should also be noted that Bryansk Oblast borders Belarus. Now, it's not at all a shock that ISIS would be behind this attack or would carry an attack like this out. After all, Russia has been and is to a degree still today a pretty big contributor to the fight against ISIS. They have troops in Syria. They've had troops in Iraq. And that's actually one area where even up to this day, Russian and U.S. troops continue to cooperate in the fight against ISIS. And because of all of this, ISIS has pledged to launch attacks on Russia. We've seen one foiled attack against a Russian synagogue in Moscow that was foiled earlier this month. And we saw an ISIS attack on the Russian embassy in Kabul back in 2022. The U.S. State Department had also released a warning just a couple weeks ago that U.S. citizens should avoid large public gatherings to include concerts. Now, of course, this is part of the United States' duty to warn policy, where even with adversaries, they will share intelligence that they have of impending terrorist attacks that could involve that could include deaths to civilians. Really as part of a way of warning those governments, hey, this is about to happen, you should try to stop it. And here's what we know. Now with those four terrorists arrested in Bryansk, some videos have begun to be published on these terrorists, including one video of an interrogation of one of those arrested, which show that they had been, which includes some questions and answers, and many of those answers show that they had been contacted anonymously on Telegram and offered up to half a million rubles in exchange for just procuring a gun and killing people in Moscow. One of the terrorists specifically said that they had been contacted by the assistant of one of the clerics that they had been following. Now, this attack itself is certainly important. I mean, it shows that ISIS is still very much alive and well, and it's able to launch these kinds of attacks. But it's more important in this kind of scenario what Russia chooses to do about this attack. It's not looking great. The, the messaging coming out from the Russian government does not look good. The intel services, of course, look very bad. Putin himself shrugged off warnings from the U.S. State Department, calling those warnings from the State Department Western blackmail. Now, that looks very, very bad on him. And it looks very, very bad on the intelligence services that the U.S. had more intelligence on an attack like this happening than they did. And they're the Russian. This was in Russia, and the Russian services didn't have that kind of intelligence. A lot of them have been, of course, focused on Ukraine with the war going on. 
And it seems like they just stopped paying attention to ISIS. At least that's what it partially looks like here. Of course, everything was pointing to these attacks ultimately happening. And when they finally did, Russian officials and Russian mouthpieces have all been blaming Ukraine, which is based on flimsy evidence at best. In fact, we've already mentioned Putin's recent speech to the Russian people following this attack, which basically is attempting to blame Ukraine without necessarily directly blaming Ukraine. Now, even with the scapegoating of Ukraine, I still don't think that this was a false flag. I think that this was a very real attack by a very real threat group uh, with very real capabilities and very real interest in carrying out these types of attacks. It makes the Russian government look really, really bad, and it, it looks like a huge failure to protect its citizens. And the war in Ukraine is a very convenient scapegoat. In fact, an attack like this, if narratively used correctly, could allow Putin to continue to expand war powers, launch another round of mobilization, and, and nationalize certain industries. Further, the scapegoating of Ukraine could allow Putin and other Russian officials to save some face, basically rope Ukraine into this attack, try to achieve some more wartime goals as a result of this, while more or less ignoring the actual threat that ISIS posed to Russia. And because of that, we may see more ISIS attacks on Russia. And Putin and the Russian government may actually attempt to tie those attacks to Ukraine as well. Now, I say all this, but we could also see some kind of Russian response against ISIS, though I'm not quite sure what capacity or capability they have remaining to really go after them in force. I mean, we could see some attacks in Ukraine just to back the narrative that Ukraine had some sort of involvement, but we could also see some special forces raids or airstrikes throughout Central Asia against where ISIS is believed to be operating. Though again, I'm not quite sure what capacity Russia has to do something like that with the vast majority of its military bogged down in Ukraine. I'm not quite sure that they have the capability to go after ISIS in Central Asia and force in any significant meaningful way while also prosecuting its war in Ukraine. Simply put, we're just going to have to wait and see what all happens next. I mean, there's still a lot of information coming out. There's a lot to be discovered about the situation, and there's a lot for the Russian government to do about this situation. But that's what's happened up to this point. With all that, I want to hear your thoughts on this because this was a very nasty attack. It was very, very terrible. And whatever side you are on the war, I think we should all agree that nothing should be happening to civilians and that this was just absolutely heinous all around. However, it's certainly concerning to see the Russian government pivoting and basically using Ukraine and blaming them for part of this attack. With all that, like this video if you found this informative and subscribe for more analysis on international affairs and basically the war in Ukraine, what's going on in the Middle East and beyond. With all that, I'll talk to you later. Bye.